Hello YouTube, this is ZS in here. Um, in this video, I'm actually just going to be talking about uh, basically all I know about Zippos. Um, just because, you know, I figure I want to be start collecting them. Um, I would like to go ahead and get a lot of this stuff out of the way, so that way I can still provide you guys with the videos I normally do. Um, so anyway, yeah. Uh, all I'm really going to be doing is basically doing an overview and sort of an initial review of the Zippo Lighter. Um, and actually, a reason why I actually kind of wanted a Zippo over all the other lighters. Again, as I'm going to tell you, I'm actually not into smoking at all. That just, I'm just not, definitely not. It, it sounds like a really bad idea to me. Uh, you know, and I'm just not into that at all. Plus, I do have asthma. It would definitely be very bad for me. In fact, probably probably an idiotic move to ever smoke a cigar in my life um, because of my because uh, of that so anyway um, but they are pretty cool to collect some they actually do have a pretty interesting history um, I don't know much about the history uh, but you know they've been around a while so that being said they have quite a history I guess and uh, some of them you know some of them actually can have some pretty high value, sentimental value to a lot of people and uh, all that stuff. Anyway, this here is just uh, a Zippo lighter. There's nothing really special about it. It's It's got a nice finish on it, I think. See, it's got a sort of brushed metal finish on it, which I think looks really, really, really good. I like that a lot. So, yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, still working on it, trying to get this all one-handed uh, opening done and you know down but nice finish as you can see it's, it's got the finish on the on the front and back of the lighter but on the sides it's very high polish very very high polish so that's cool um, so that's that also believe it or not this is actually a brass lighter if you take a look at the inside of the lid here you can kind of see br it's, it's made of brass um, it's probably hard to see in here if I remove the insert, which is removable, you can see in here, it's a little more obvious in this compartment that's made out of glass, or not glass, brass. Um, the thing now, that's immediately noticeable when you remove the insert is that the lighter loses a lot of integrity, and I mean a lot. It doesn't have that satisfying sort of click, it doesn't have any resistance, the lid just flops around. Um, and I've actually noticed on this particular one, it doesn't close all the way, but when the insert's in, it will close completely. And there's a reason for that. And it also is not flopping around. It stays shut. It's open. It stays open. Unless if you intentionally close it like that. So I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, as I was saying, this is actually a brass lighter with a chrome coating. With a, uh, It's been chrome plated. So um, they used to make them completely out of stainless steel. Or not stainless steel. They did used to make them completely... Yeah, I think it was stainless steel actually. Um, but then they switched over to brass for some reason, so... Yeah. Um, this particular Zippo isn't filled. I don't know when I'm ever going to get around to filling it. We'll see. Um, I do plan to use it uh, to fill it eventually. Just so that way you know it's filled. You go in inside the lighter, uh, I'll show you some of these basic components. See right here you have the striker. You use that, you know, to strike. You get your sparks and all that stuff. Um, if you look right there, you see that little bit of a, a rod? That's your, actually your flint. Ner yeah, that's your flint. That is how the spark is created. And I will actually be showing you in this video how to gain access to that. Um, because these do deteriorate, obviously, as you, as you, you know, spark it. So, I'm showing you how to gain access to that. Um, you know, this is your, this is your striking wheel, obviously. This is your chimney. I believe it's an, an, a 16-hole chimney. As you can see, and inside the chimney you have a wick. So, that is what catches on fire when you light it. Now, it's not going to catch because there's no fuel in it again. Um, but if there's fuel in it, this will get saturated with the lighter fluid, and that will be what ignites, and then it'll stay lit. Um, and this piece right here is called the cam. And if you look in here real quickly, as I close it, you might notice the, the cam is lifting up. It's probably going to be hard to see, but that's what keeps the current constant pressure 
on the lid when it's closed and that's what keeps it fully shut and it gives you a little bit of resistance when opening it so it gives you that nice satisfying click um, when closing it so, and when opening it so that's what this piece here does and you can actually buy different inserts um, I think mostly they're third party uh, but there's actually a butane insert you can buy and this actually serves a purpose um, actually it actually when it's in this down position it'll actually allow fuel to you know go through the nozzle or whatever it's called but when it's up in the upright position um, it cuts the fuel line off so that it won't leak so that's that um, the advantages of having butane actually over a uh, a standard lighter fluid Zippo is that it won't evaporate on you. The fuel on standard Zippos will actually evaporate. Um, that's a pretty common issue that people have is that it evaporates. Um, so you could fill it with lighter fluid and then I don't know how long it takes to evaporate literally nearly but um, you know you could several weeks months later go to light it and nothing happens even though you haven't really used it much since you filled it so you know because it evaporates so that's how that works uh, but the butane obviously since it has you know that little cutoff feature with a cam it will actually won't evaporate on you very easily um, so the cam is literally just a spring loaded device you can actually fold it in the upright position there and you can put it down when it's in the upright position it prevents the lid from closing at all uh, it only goes this far when the cam is in the upright position but with it in the downright position, you know, and then close the lid. So, apparent. I don't know if that's really a feature or if that's you know just sort of the name, just the way it is. I don't know. I don't know if that's something Zippo does on purpose, but you know, that's that. Um, if you pull out the insert, uh, what you got? You have, you know, just your insert, and then here is your cotton stuff. You pull this up to expose the um, the fluff in there that you use to fill it that you put the lighter fluid in that's what you soak the fluid in and that is how the fluid is stored um, so yeah in order to fill it you simply just pull this up lift this uh, stuff up and then you squirt some fluid in there and uh, then you put it back down and then you then you can use it so that's how that works um, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much that. Um, a tip actually I learned when filling it, if you don't want it to drip all over the surface you're going to be filling over, um, you can actually, if you flip the cam up, um, normally the lighter, normally the insert is inserted like this, with the cam close to the hinge and the wheel is on the outside of the lighter, like that. So if you pull this out when you want to fill it, pull it out, flip it this way, and put it into the lighter, you can then fill it without the fear of the um, fluid leaking onto whatever surface you're using. Because when you're filling it, obviously you need to hold it upside down. What that's doing is that is actually soaking the, um, the wick in fluid, which is, you know, that's, that's fine and dandy, but now you run the risk of it dripping all over the surface you're holding it over. So if you have it upside down inside the lighter, it'll only drip into the body. And that's that you know that won't be messy then you just then if you because you flip it this way when you pull it out you can quickly flip it around and stick it back in without you know dripping all over the place which is pretty handy if you ask me so that's that I forgot to uh, flip the uh, cam down and that's that's that um, so this is basically just basic stuff on the zippo lighter <clears throat> That's really, again, all I know. Um, now, some people like to do tricks with the Zippos. I don't know any tricks, really. I only know how to flip it shut. And it, I don't even know how to do that, really, because it's, it's, I don't get it all the time. See? There, it didn't go all the way. Um, but some people like to do these really crazy tricks with Zippos, but actually, um, in doing that, you're actually abusing the lighter, because even though it's a rugged lighter, um, the hinge is its weakest point. And, uh, it's really only held in by a small pin. Uh, if you can take a look inside of there, you can see that it's only being held in place by a simple pin, which, you know, is pretty fragile. So, 
all this flipping and flopping around could cause your lid to break off. So if you buy a Zippo just for tricks, just buy. You better be prepared to buy. You better be prepared to buy a lot of Zippos um, over the course of weeks. Um, so that's that. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out classy ways of opening it. You know, without having to abuse it too much. That's the best way I know how to close it, but you know. I'm working on this, but since it's such a slick lighter, it's hard to do, which is interesting. So, that's that. Um, so, let me actually show you uh, how you can gain access to your flint. Well, actually, before I do that, let me show you some, mar some of the markings on the bottom of suppose that's something I've been meaning to get into in this video. I haven't gotten to it though. Uh, if you look on the bottom of the Zippo, uh, you'll notice there are some markings. As you can see, we've got Zippo, and right here is an I, and over here is a 10, uh, Bradford, Pennsylvania, made in USA. Um, what the, what all those, what does all that mean? Well, this, you know, tells you that it's made in Bradford, Pennsylvania, which is where Zippo's plant is. Sometimes you'll find one that's made in Niagara Falls. They did once have a plant in Canada, but it closed down in 2001. Or at the end of 2001, so, yeah. But anyway, over here you'll notice the I. That's their... The I and the 10 is actually their dating system right now. It's changed a lot over the course of years, but, um, the current, the modern dating system for now, um, is the I actually stands for October, and the 10 stands for 2010. So this is made in October of this year, which is pretty cool. How do I know this? Because... Um, it's really actually pretty easy. There are 12 months in a year, and, uh, there are, there are 12 months in a year, and they use letters to, um, to identify them. So an A would be January, B is February, C is March, D is April, um, uh, E is May, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, F is June, all this stuff, so that's how you can actually tell what it is. Since I have an I, that means it's October, because you go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. There you go. It's made in October of 2010, which is pretty cool. Um, I find that to be pretty interesting. Pretty neat. Now, in terms of the insert, um, Set that off to the side there. As you can see, insert in it. It feels really, it gets really flimsy. Um, again, the hinge here is very flimsy, and uh, it feels nice and sturdy when the when the insert's in there, thanks to that cam right there. But with this, when it's not in there, you can see it's not lined up at all right there. So, and it just flops all over the place. It's very fragile, so be careful with that. Now you can actually see there's some markings on the inserts. Uh, Right here, it's telling you about, for best uh, performance, use Zippo brand, flints, and fluid. Uh, and here it says, it's actually kind of hard to read through the camera. Uh, Zippo Manufacturing Company, yeah. Bradford, Pennsylvania. That's located in the middle right there. See Zippo Manufacturing Company, Bradford, Pennsylvania. Um, and then right here, it says, made in Zippo, USA. Right there. Then on the back you can get some more dating information. I just so happen to have bought one where the dating says, where the dates match um, on this exactly. Um, it is more common nowadays to get them that don't match, but this one was made in October 2010, this particular insert, so that's pretty cool. That definitely tells me I have a genuine zip out, which isn't surprising because it was, I'm, yeah. Uh, but it says on here somewhere where, when it was made, keep away from children, blah, blah, blah. Light does not self-extinguish close to put it out. Uh, actually, I think the date is on this side. Yeah, actually it is. I've never noticed that. See right there, it has an I, and there it has a 10. So it was made in October 2010. So these two were probably made for each other. So, so that's how that works. Um, well now I will uh, briefly show you how you can gain access to some different components. Um, in terms of the wick, if your wick is getting, you know, if, it's, if, you're, if you've just filled your zippo and you have a decent um, 
uh, a decent flint in there, but you can't get it to light, you probably need to um, expose some new wick. And all you do is just take a pair of pliers and gently pull up on here to expose some of the new flint, and then cut off some of the cut off the old burnt flake wick. Whatever wick, yeah. And uh, that's how that works. So you just take pliers, you pull it up, expose some new wick, and that's that. And if you run out completely, there is a way to uh, replace it. I don't know how to do that though. But um, to gain access to your to your flint, you use this screw down here. You'll notice it does spark right now. That sparking action is thanks to the to the flint in there. You'll see when we take the flint out, it won't spark anymore. So actually, you can use the case as a screwdriver here. Um, just be careful about that hinge. There you go. Let's get it started. Then you can hand, you can get the rest of the way out with your hand. It is spring loaded, so be ready. There, see how it's spring loaded? I mean, you know. So just pull it out. This here is your. I don't remember exactly what that particular piece is called, but this is, uh, helps keep the constant pressure on the actual flint. And the flint itself is in here. And as you can see, it's right there. Uh, I'm actually realizing now I might have sparked my lighter too much. This is getting awful small um, for only having it for a day, and I haven't even filled it yet. So, um, yeah. And you can buy these. Um, I think you can buy them at smoke shops, actually, or you can get them online, which is a bit of a problem for me because I'm not old enough to buy from this smoke shop. I will be next year, though, so heck. That's pretty cool. So I'll see about that. You actually can get replacement flints uh, pretty easily if you uh, take a part, take apart a um, simple bic lighter. I think they use the same size flints, not the same brand. I mean, you know, these are obviously Zippo brand flints, but they do use very similar flints. And you can, even though it is a bit tricky, you could very easily lose the flint. Um, let's see, it's going in there sideways. It's getting awfully small. And I just dropped it. What is it? What is it? Um, you can take that out, actually. And let me show you. With the flint not in there, it will not spark. Obviously, there's nothing on there to make it spark, so that's that. But anyway, there's the flint again. You'll notice one side is a bit smooth, that's where it's been striked, it's been getting stricked, stricken. It's right there, it's kind of got a bowl shape to it too, kind of concaved in there. Uh, so just stick this into this hole. There, I think it went in there. Correct orientation, then you just use this. I actually think, I think this is called a plunger, but I'm not sure. I'm probably wrong on that, but then you just use this to push it in. This is kind of this is the trickiest part right here. You gotta screw it in while pushing down. But once the threads start catching and start screwing in, it'll hold just fine. Then you can, you know, screw it in like normal. Screw it in as tight as you can by hand. And uh once that's all done. See now I can't tighten it anymore with my hand. Then you just use the case here. This little this Uh, there, that's that's in there good. And then, you know, it, it lights again. So that's how that works. And then you can go ahead and put your lighter back together, and you have your flint, which is pretty handy. Again, you can buy them from like smoke shops, but if you get if you take apart standard big light disposable ones, you can actually get uh, there's actually ex uh, flints in there that uh, the flint in there can be used with the Zippo, um, which is pretty cool if you want to do that. Um, so yeah, that's really about about it. Um, uh, you know, I mean, still be expecting more Zippo-related videos. Like I might do whenever I do eventually fill this, I might do a filling tutorial, um, but I'm not into filling it right now. Um, actually. The reason why I wanted a Zippo actually over all the other ones, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are other lighters that can do this, but I just like this one, how you can actually light it and then set it down and it'll stay lit like a candle. Um, 
because one other thing I'm starting to get a little into is uh, making a paracord lanyard. I just want to sort of experiment around with that. I don't have any, but in order to, if you cut paracord, you need to burn the ends to keep it together, to uh, you know hold it together to keep it from fraying. So I just, you know, I'd give us a light, and the flame would come on, but it'd stay lit like a candle. I'd just burn it like that. It's like a little, you know, I like that. And then when I'm done, to extinguish the flame, all I do is close it. Um, in theory, you could maybe blow this out, but since it is a, advertised as being a windproof lighter, that probably won't work so well. So, me, oh, be sure you know about that. I can only, there you go. Um, so, that's it really. Um, now, I do actually have one more Zippo, and I would really like to show you the markings on that one, but unfortunately, I'm going to give that one to somebody as a gift. Um, if for some extreme reason he turns it down, which would be very odd, uh, not odd, but, you know, just very unlikely, um, I will then open that one up and show you its markings if you're interested in that. So, anyway, close. See? There. Um, that's it. I'm going to go now. Um, hopefully learn some basics on Zippos. I mean, again, I'm really not much of a Zippo expert. I just know the basics. That's, I think I've shared every bit of knowledge I have with you about Zippos. Um, really, I think I have. Um, I also shouldn't open it like that. That's another way you can break it, because um, that hinge is not meant for that. Um, but I have to admit, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's not good for it, but it's fun anyway. Um, I just, yeah. that's it guys, I'm going to go now, thanks for watching.